Wow, 10 people already. Hey, guys. Hi. Morning, Doug. Hey, OK, let's see. I heard Mark. Um, Varun, are you there? Yep. OK. Baram? Yep. OK. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Uh, Chris Borchers. Yep, I'm here. Okay. Uh, um, Mike uh, Lanier. Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> um, Rachel. Yep, I'm here. Okay. And Rachel, uh, thank you again for taking notes often. Um, if you want someone else to volunteer, because I know it's a lot of work, and, you know, please let me know. Um, I just definitely appreciate yeah. all the stuff you do. I am happy. I'm happy to have people help take notes. The only reason I take notes is because I like being able to refer back to them. So if other people feel like they can, that would be great. Okay, cool. Um, Steve-O. Hi, I'm here. Hello. Okay. Uh, Daniel Crook. Yep, hello. Hello, Joe Sherman. Joe Sherman. All right, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sarah, are you there? Sarah? All right, Ben Hartstorn. Hi, sorry, I was muted. Hey. This is oh. Sarah. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> ben, are you there? There we go. Good morning. Hello. Happy to be here. Sorry I missed last week. No, Heard fine. it was fun. It's always fun. <laughs> <clears throat> Klaus. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but, let's see. But, uh, who am I forgetting? Do we actually have somebody named Cambridge, or is that the name of the city? Hi, yeah, we have some... Jürgen Leschner here from Pivotal in Cambridge, Boston. Oh, okay. Do me a favor. Add your guys' names to the attendee list. Hold on a minute. Let me paste the link. Do, 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 do. There's a link to the agenda. If you guys can paste your name in there, that way I can get your names recorded. Uh, Orit, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, Clemens. Hello, I am. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mr. Rakowski. Matt, you there? Okay, I think we lost Matt first. No, no, I'm, no, I'm here. I was just on, on mute by default. And then I was <laughs> updated my own entry in the. Okay, got it. Uh, Kathy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Uh, Jim Curtis. Yep, I'm here. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Joe Brown, Clemens, Fabio. Yes, I'm here. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, hold on a minute. There we go. Uh, ba -da -bum, da -bum, bum, bum. I got Steve already, right? Did I, Steve, are you there? Yes. yes. I, okay. Thank you. Hey, this um, is uh, Joe Sherman. I think I was having dueling microphones here, so I am on the call. Gotcha. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, Vyam? Yes, this is Vyam here from Oracle. Okay. Thank you. Uh, William. William, right there? Yes. Oh, Sorry. William. Just finding I'm here. How's it going? OK, what about Stanley? Hello, I'm here. All right, cool. Um, did I miss anybody? Oh, uh, Yaron. Hi. Sorry for being late. Yep. OK, is there anybody on the call who does not have an asterisk next to their name in the attendee list? Hello. This is John Mitchell from SAP. Uh, my machine just crashed, so I'm rebooting. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Uh, hey, Doug. This is Austin from Serverless. Hey, Austin. I assume you're in the car, right? Yeah, yes, I am. All right. Okay. Anybody else on the call that doesn't have a little asterisk next to their name? Uh, this um, is Alex from Serverless. I just added my name. Okay, cool. And the asterisk. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, hello, Doug. Um, this is Girish. Um, can I just add my name? It's nice not there on the list. 
Yeah, add your name to the list. Yes, and then we'll put uh, someone will put an asterisk if Thank you do you. it yourself. All right, and with that, I think we are ready to go. We'll catch everybody else later. So, um, let's see. In terms of the agenda, actually, there is one thing I wanted to switch the order of. Hold on a sec. So I feel a little bad. Um, Kathy did not get a chance to finish her quick little what is source on the last call because there was um, she had so many questions. So I agreed to give her another five minutes just to quickly finish up um, her point of view. Um, and then we can quickly move on to the other agenda items. But I did want to get that out of the way because I feel bad that we didn't get a chance for all four people to finish their work. So Kathy, do you want to go ahead and share your screen or just talk to it, whichever one would be easiest for you? Okay, yeah, I can share my screen. Okay. Now. Just a second. Okay, let me bring up a slide. Hmm. Uh, could you, um, Doc, would you mind to go over other um, item first? Let me find my slide and bring it up. Okay, that's fine. We, we could try to make it through some of the, uh, I think, easy PRs that are available. Yeah. Okay. Let's take the first one here. Um, one, it's 111. This one, there's, there's, there's a link to it in the chat. Um, actually, hold on a minute. Let me go ahead and share my screen. It might be easier for people. Okay. So on this one, um, in terms of changes, all I did is made sort of a, an index list of, of uh, material that we're adding for people to share, you know, presentations and stuff like that from either meetings or conferences. Uh, I believe on last week's call, they, people asked for, that, for an index as opposed to just a directory for things to be put in. That way we can also have pointers to things that are not kept in our directory. And I think here's a good example from Sarah. And I don't believe there have really been any comments on this one. So let me just double check. Yeah, no real comments. So are there any questions or concerns with this one? Okay. Any objection then to merging this one? Looks All right, good. cool. All right, cool. Okay, moving on. Next one. Clemens, number 90. Would you like to quickly talk to this one? Let me get the link to the chat one a sec. Um, there you go. This is the definition of occurrence. It seems like the, the chatter on this one died down, so I'm hoping it means it's okay with everybody. Um, yes. And I think, yeah, so I, that the, the request was to add further uh, examples, so I put the for example sentence there. Yep, right there, okay. Any comments on this one? Okay, any, con any concerns, any objections? Like three oh, more sorry. seconds to read, to read all the... Yeah, please go ahead, sorry. So this addresses the action item above. Should we strike through that? Uh, right? I, I believe so, just to double check. Clemens, we can mark this one as this AI right here is done, right? Yeah, we, we had talked this through and it was, I think the consensus was, was fine, but um, there was example context was taken out of the original and I moved that back in. Right, but we just wanna make sure that this is the AI that we're talking about for your PR, right? Yes, that's, that's, the, that's the one. Okay, cool. All right, any comments, concerns? All right, any objection then to approving this one? All right, done, thank you guys. All right, this one, I'm hoping this isn't controversial since it's, it's been sitting there for a while. Um, this one, um, let me hide the comments for a sec. So this one, I, I don't remember what initiated this, but there was a, a desire to make the, uh, what is it, the goal section? Or the, no, the status section. Now the status section of the spec basically talk about what our current, uh, or what we're, what we're currently doing, which is basically just defining uh, the abstract definition of the extra metadata for an event. Um, it does talk about how we may do something else in the future, but that's still TBD. Well, but, I thought it wasn't TBD. Well, it depends on whether we merge your PR, right? <laughs> um, so I, I guess that these, those two PRs do kind of overlap a little. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a big point. It's like, if we're not actually trying to achieve interoperability, then I'm not sure what we're doing. Yeah, well, I, we are. I, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree that we should uh, uh, aspire to having uh, protocol mappings for the properties. Okay, so let me ask this question. Is it, it would it make sense then to uh, completely kill this PR in favor of Sarah's and have, have that basically resolve both? Or is it worthwhile to have the current status of what we've agreed to, which is at least the abstract definition? I'm okay either way. Can we just hold this until after the other discussion? That's fair. Okay, any, any objection to holding it? Okay, so we can put it on hold, that's not a problem. Um, but up, 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 up. Okay, Clemens, next one. The definition of event. Let me paste the link to the chat. Let me just double check. I think this one. So, Sarah, you had a comment six minutes ago, I just noticed. Is this a blocking comment? Um, hang on, sorry. So yeah, I mean, I th think that um, generally, like what, I, I can't think of any reason an event would identify its destination. In fact, I think that subverts the main goal of the specification. Okay, it sounds like this, well actually for two reasons. The one, it sounds like there is some discussion around your comment that needs to happen. And then Clemens, like, you need to rebase if nothing else. So perhaps we need to move this one off the easy to review list and do deal with that later, in particular offline. Is that fair? Yes, it's fine. Okay, cool. I, I can take, I have no objection to taking the generally out. Oh, good. I'm, okay. I'm just, I, since that was not a protocol definition, I didn't want this to be dealing in absolutes, but I'm okay with, with taking the generally off and then I'm going to rebase. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so we should be able to address that hopefully over the next week. And there was one that I had on the list from Austin, but unfortunately some new comments were added recently, which I th think might require some changes. So I wanted to suggest we skip that one for now, if that's okay. And I think that's it in terms of what I would classify as the easy potential PRs. Um, Kathy, are you ready to present your stuff yet? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay. so let me uh, share my screen. Um, can you can you see my slide? Yes. Look. Yes. Okay. So let me go to the uh, let me go to the uh, what's that animation mode. Um, oh, how can I minimize this? Um, hold on. So, uh, slide show. Okay, hold on. So I'm sorry. Let me do this. Okay, you can see the slide, right? Okay. Um. So this is an example. Um. Actually, it's the same example I presented last time. Um. So if there's a, like you know, for example, um, this use case, there are two events. That two events is going to um is part of the. Uh, same uh, serverless application. So when the burst of events happened, for example, if for the uh, window open and also the um, motion detection event, th that could happen at many different houses, right? So when the um, when the serverless platform receive all those events, it needs a way to know to correlate, you know, the event A and event B. Uh, for example, the motion event and the window open event or door open event from the same house, basically, um, so that you know it can process you know it um, um, correctly. So there could be many instances, execution in function execution instances for each house. There's a function execution instance. So, so the problem is um, we need a way to correlate um, those events um, correctly. We could receive multiple uh, motion um, detection events and multiple um, door window open events. So how do we correlate them together? I think that's a problem. Um, I think this is a, it, this is just an example. There are many other use cases which will need you know, um, the mechanism to correlate them together. So the proposal is to um, provide um, we need to define a correlation token in the event. 
And that correlation token is used to correlate all the events associated with the same uh, function or application instance, such as, you know, that token can identify, say, oh, this is an event come from, for example, Kathy's house or whatever. And that token can, could be any string that uniquely identify the application event instance. Um, for this example, it's a, it could be, you know, a house address or whatever other unique string. But for other examples, it could be, um, for example, if for a travel request, it could be a travel request ID um, for any other, uh, for, I mean, different. So my point is different application, that string will be different, uh, but it needs to be a unique string. Um, that also for different event types, this token could sit in different location of the event data. Um, so I think, you know, we should not put any restriction on the location of the token in the event data because, um, because that, that's not, I think that's not uh, feasible or it's not a good way um, because there's so many different event types and especially in IoT scenarios, the, all those device equipments are manufactured by different vendors. So I, I think, you know, one way to do this is the token field can be identified by, uh, for example, a path string, which specifies the location of the token in the event data, you know, no matter. But why, do you want, why do you want people to deserialize the message in order to figure it out? I think the general idea was that the source is part of the context or the header portion. So we need a way to identify the, uh, the location of that correlation token. So, right. so, so, so you're, on, you're on, hold on, hold on a sec. You're on, hold on a sec. I'd like to keep, uh, let, let, let's let Kathy finish and then people get a chance to ask clarifying questions because we don't really have time to go back and forth on the design discussion. So let, let's hold off on that. Kathy, can you, can you, because you're, you're basically out of time. So you can just finish up your, your side of things and then we can get people to ask clarifying questions if they have any. Yeah, okay. okay. So, um, so the, 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 okay, so as we discussed last, ta last time, right, the source, you know, um, could be a, a storage device, and then, you know, and then, um, but, you know, for this case, right, if this um, um, motion detection event, if we define the source as that um, picture, if when the picture is saved to a storage, we define the source as that storage, and then we need a way to identify the, you know, the correlation token. So that will be part of the, uh, um, that correlation token should be in the data, the event data. And then I think we need a way to do that. So that's why I'm suggesting a uh, location path will be uh, the way to do that. That in that way, no matter where that path is, where that correlation token is located in the event data, no matter what kind of event source, we have a generic way of doing that. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, thank you. Now keep in mind, let's keep questions just to clarifying questions, not trying to convince people one way or the other. So are there any questions in terms of just understanding what Kathy was talking about? I do have a question. Okay. Um, the, when we were talking earlier about the source being a URI and that the structure of that URI will be different for different types of uh, uh, events and different implementations. Um, would something like uh, the the house from which there are multiple IoT devices, uh, wouldn't that be a portion of that URI uh, in order to get like from all the way from the most generic down to the to the specific device? Uh, can't you get this this kind of correlation for something like that from a component of the source as a URI? Yes, yes. I think that's, that's, that's the, that information, that correlation token information will be in that URI, but we need a way to, to say, as you just mentioned, different sources, you know, different event um, types. They could be in different, that URI is a string, right? In different location of that URI. So we need a pass. For example, here I give an example. If it's in the HTTP header API gateway, it might be, you know, headers, body, and then uh, something, you know. And then if it's in uh, like a, a, a storage, it could be like some records and then some whatever, metadata, OBS, yes. and only what the vendor defined. But, okay, but, but uh, I think the question is, why not just place the actual URL 
in the source, why do we need this in direction where the content type of the message is ambiguous, the schema is ambiguous, all that. Why not just plant the URI, which has sort of a namespace and you know, a house number or type, et cetera. Okay, I'm gonna, wait, 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 guys, guys, hold up. I'm gonna have to call time here because I feel like we're getting into design discussions. And I think the idea, of, the abstract idea of just having a correlation token is what she wanted to get across. And we can talk about within the PR itself, the best way to represent that or even to have it at all. So at, at this time, I'd like to call time on this part of the discussion because I just want to get Kathy a chance to present her view. And Kathy, I think the next step here would be for you to open up a pull request for them people to have follow on discussions around how best to do this at all. Does that make sense? Well, I have a question um, just about the, it, sa it seems like from your example, Kathy, that there may be sometimes be, be like multiple, um, fee uh, multiple pieces of data, right? That somebody could want to correlate, right? Um, it could be like this particular house and windows in that house or something. So I just wanted to, I, I was curious whether that's something you've, you've thought through and, and just re maybe I could just, if you can speak to that now or, or maybe address that that consideration um, in a subsequent um, pull request. Or I'd like, Kathy, if possible, can you address that within the PR itself? Um, uh, okay. Um, I, I, okay, I'm not very um, sure I understand the question. So it could be any that, that uh, so let me just um, express my view. So that correlation token could be anything. Okay, if you think, you know, it need to go to the, you know, um, um, that granularity, a uh, uh, final granularity level, yeah, just specify that. Um, so different use cases, different application could have different correlation token. So the way, so we, I, I think, you know, um, we need a correlation token to correlate these events, um, but how to define it, you know, I think, you know, because oh, there's so many different use cases. So I think a location field, no matter, so no matter where you put it, it's URI, right? But inside that URI, where it is, where is that correlation token? Um, so I, have, I have a question on this. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you see as the difference between this field mm -hmm. and the um, subject and or title field you would see in typical messaging systems? Because that seems to be that further scoping that you're asking for. How is, that, how is what you're proposing different from the subject field in a typical messaging system? Yeah. Yeah, just a uh, object. So when you say object field, I assume you're talking about the correlation token object field, right? So I'm specific, what I'm specifically talking about is, is prior art. So there's there are messaging systems, um, whether they are um, events based or whether they are uh, carrying messages. Um, most of them have a notion or very many of them have a notion of a description of the content of the message that is um, allows for a broad description of any shape. Um, that field is sometimes called subject, sometimes that field is called title. And so the question is how your proposal here differs from those approaches. Okay, so if it's called subject or it's called the title, whatever it's called, as long as it's a, so, so as you said, it could be called for different uh, field, different names, right? I think here we, what we need is a correlation token. Um, of course, we can. Uh, my, question, my question is what does that cor correlation token correlate with, and how is that different? Well, I, I mean. I, so, wait, wait, guys, 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 guys wait, Matt, 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 I have Matt hold on. Matt, Matt, no, no, I, I'm, I'm going to have to call time here. I'm sorry to be a, a little bit of a dictator here, but we, we, we really need to get onto other subjects, and this wasn't meant for a time of a deep discussion. I think she made her point clear about what she's looking for, and let's save the discussion of the design and how it relates to other fields for the PR itself. This isn't the time to dive into this. This was simply a matter of letting Kathy finish her, her speech from last time. So I'm going to have to call time here. I mean, to not be happy yeah. discussions, just not at this particular point in time. Can, can I make a... Doug, this is a this is more of a um, proposal for how we like handle these sorts of moments. Would it be acceptable? Like, I don't think this is in a place where we could really propose a PR. Could we could we have like a place where we just continue the conversation in written form since there's still a lot of conversation people want to have? Well, people are very free to talk about these things offline, but. I would ref uh, my preferred approach is to have people discuss these things either through an issue or a pull request. Because um, I think that that helps focus the discussions and people can have offline discussions. But on this call right now, I'd like to get back to what I 
we've heard from everybody for, for the most part of the most important issue we just, that we need to resolve, which is the scope of what we're doing. And that's why I'm trying to get back to that conversation. So uh, maybe um, Kathy could make sure that this is covered in the use cases and then open an issue describing the problem that needs to be solved. And we could start to talk about that because I think sometimes um, we're, we're getting overly precise in the proposal and without sketching, without really digging into the problem that needs to be solved. And that might be inhibiting conversation. I agree. I just, the only observation I was gonna make, Doug, was that uh, some of the things she said here would be best embodied in a, in a use case. And we need to tease out what people are seeing in terms of a, an example. As she's been saying, it's, this is an example that the value can be anything. So people are inferring too much. So we need to capture the use case. I agree. So Kathy, can you please take the action item to write up your use case and potentially a PR if you feel comfortable doing that, but at least start with the use cases and get the discussion going someplace, whether it's an issue you know, or PR, that's your choice in terms of how you want to move forward. Yeah, yeah, I, I can write up this and okay. then propose okay. PR. But I, I think, uh, you know, um, sometimes I, I feel it's good to have an interactive discussion in the meeting. Um, I agree, but Kathy, you have to understand the, the point of this part of the discussion was not to put forward a proposal to have a discussion. This was to put your point of view about what is source. It wasn't to have a deep discussion about it. Okay. That, that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to shut down the conversation other than, I just want to make sure you have the, the chance to finish up your five minutes and we've gone way over that. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm okay. fine. You okay. know, maybe, uh, yeah, I think okay. we can do that. But actually, um, I have another suggestion. No. Maybe we can have some separate session to pull the people together to discuss something yes. like this. Um, and that, that, that's, that, 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 that is on the agenda, Kathy. Yes. Okay, sure. Okay, okay. thank you. So can you give me a favor and, st and uh, stop sharing? There you go. Let me go yeah. back and share mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sarah, um, draft design discussion, or, I'm sorry, design goals. You wanna lead that discussion? Because what I'd like to do, if, if possible in this call, is I know that there are, there are quite a few comments in the PR itself for things that I would consider more of a syntactical change more than anything else. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe we, we can, at this point in time, talk about some of the higher design goals of what you're trying to get here or design, um, the design goals that you want to put forward here and get those discussions going right now, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, in fact, there, um, thanks everybody for the feedback. I have, oops, I wanted to put this in a Google Doc so people could, I'm going to just outdent this. We can delete it later or move it. But um, I sort of riffed off of um, Clemens' suggestion that we do this with like user stories. Um, and so I'd like to go through the personas and user stories that were sort of inspired by one of the comments that Clemens made and see if we can get agree on this, like what, what we're trying to achieve in the form of user stories. This is, I think, something we did with the white paper that was like sort of helpful in clarifying things. Sarah, um, do, you wanna, do you wanna share your screen or you want me to keep sharing mine? It's up to you. Keep sharing your screen. It's in the, um, sorry, go back to the notes. I've just pasted something into the notes. Oh, okay, hold on a sec. Um, or I can share. I don't know why my machine's other oh, that's going slow. Uh, where in the notes? Go, go, go no, to the minutes. The minutes, sorry. Oh, the minutes, I'm sorry. Delay. Just because then people can like add comments and, and um, I think there's a, um, there's a number of, there's a lot of people on the call. So if people have like wordsmithing thing, you can just make suggested edits. If people have, you know, like, so then we can do some um, more dynamic stuff if people have access to the notes that are like smaller knits just feel free to like put in suggested edits. But I wanted to walk through this section, which is, um, I, was, I was working on this as a PR last night, this morning, and I, I just kind of had an open question. So this is as far as I got. And I think that this, this high level framework might help the conversation. So, um, so this is the, the sort of the introduction to the goals section um, where I changed can to made a can. But the, the key thing is that we have, um, I believe that the main thing that we like the, the sort of, we're trying to enable this application developer persona that could create a new application, right? That in, includes event and consumer. And then the other actors here is we have somebody who's developing an event source, right? That that's the person who creates the code that is going to emit events. There's a publisher that operates the event source. And then there's the consumer developer who creates the code for an event consumer. And if it's useful, we can also have the publisher of that. Um, and then 
uh, I came up with these three stories. Two of them were um, a little modified from what Clemens wrote. But basically, the first one is, as an application developer, I can create an application without modifying. Um, there needs to be some more words there. Where the developer may not have access, access to modify the code in the event source or the event consumer. So I think there's like some missing words. But um, the idea is we're decoupling the development of these things. Um, and that could be because we have two teams, right, that we want to decouple their release cycles. Um, or it could be that they're actually a third party event sources, event consumers. And there was some question, I think a lot of folks um, in the group are coming from um, trying to figure out the serverless thing. And I wanted to point out that like, I, I came up with a, a use case that's, that I commented on this morning where you could imagine that in the future, we could have consumers that are prepackaged. You could imagine that somebody who has um, uh, uh, some kind of SMS service, right? Or, or like pager service could, could um, it could say like, oh, all the, um, you know, there's a set of events that automatically get turned into natural language if you hook up my SMS service to your, to these event types, right? Um, then, um, so that you could have event sources that are sort of prepackaged managed services and you could have event consumers and actions, right, that are um, prepackaged in some way and then developers can then like string these together um, and then maybe eventually end users and stuff um, but that would be all like software that people would be building around this um, event ecosystem so then as event publisher I want to make the event available in a way that it can be distributed to other software services and that other software can get at some particularly interesting subset with minimal effort meaning like there's probably some stuff in the middle that they can delegate to, right? They could then be done by another third party, implemented by. Um, and then there's the event consumer. As an event consumer, I want to have enough fidelity in the event metadata so that there might be generic middleware that can select and deliver a subset of events um, for, and for there to be enough fidelity in that metadata for local dispatch to an action. Um, and I would really like to have a story in here for the like the the people developing the middleware, but I didn't. I, but that could be a gateway. I didn't know quite what what the good uh, like what is the persona for the um, person or, or the, for the developer who is um, creating mm -hmm. like middleware libraries or um, gateways or transport mechanisms. Um, I, it might be good to have a persona for that. But isn't the consumer the actual, you know, like function or microservice that, you know, takes it, you know, takes a stream and acts on it? Yes. And um, as you pointed out, if that's your on, there might be some transport in the middle. There might be a gateway in the middle. That is, um, I would suggest we don't use the same term for the thing that is routing the events as the thing that eventually consumes them because the um like as we've seen in some of these source conversations the idea is that you have a source that's emitting events and then you have something that says i want this event to go to this destination um but in between there might be a bunch of hops yeah there right uh, the consumer is the endpoint or is the router in your that we agree this on is that the endpoint right okay so yeah, maybe the, consumer, can... the consumer is, is the endpoint, and then you have some form of middleware, and middleware is a broad term that um, I would not call it action, because action is the thing that you do as a, you consume, you take the event, and then you do some local stuff with it, and that might be an action. So the, the action term that we talked about before, it's not an accepted PR, um, but we did do the talk through the event concepts and I borrowed the action word from um, IBM OpenWhisk, which seems to have like the most well thought out in my mind, like just like naming of things that it, you know, seemed clear to me. And so because not everything, not every destination would be a function necessarily. I wanted to have a, a generic term. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, in, in that, in the middleware space, and that's kind of the perspective I've been taking producer and consumer are the, 
those generic terms and then the consumer will take the event and then we'll do something with it and part and, and what it might do might be an action that but it's not necessarily an action that's why and you can if slash is fine yeah, so um, for now, I'll just do slash. Because, but you're not saying that the consumer is the middleware, right? No, 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 no. That's that, so that's my point. So there's the, the speaking of middleware is there is some piece that is between the publisher and the consumer. Um, and, and it doesn't, I don't think there's an implication here that that piece that sits between those two is a networked resource. This might just be a framework. Mm -hmm. And you might have an event publisher and an event consumer that live peacefully together in process and exchange cloud event events. Um, I, I don't think that I don't think middleware is is such that it needs to be you know a central broker thing, but it is it is the piece of software that um, decouples ultimately publisher from 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 the consumer. But Clemens, that accounts for the serverless use case. Does it account for like that like the I think that the reason to include middleware explicitly is for the IoT use cases. Um, well, how, how do you think they're different? Yeah, right. right. Well, you know, it could be a messaging system. It could be uh, again within the same process of a you know a Raspberry Pi. You could have a okay. you know something emitting an event and something addressing but, it. But I, I think of this. I think of this in a very generic way, and that's also. Um, it, it, I, I don't know whether you have the. I put an issue in um, this week at the beginning of the week, um, I think issue 112, where I go over some prior art that I'm referencing. And um, where I'm basically going through some of the uh, topology choices that are being made by some by existing middleware and how they use the concepts that we have here. So, and, and I think, and I think, and if you, and I actually cite for examples for IoT infrastructures, that being AWS IoT, Watson IoT, Azure IoT Hub, and Cloud IoT Core from Google, um, and how they use those things. And I think the concept that we have right now, and also those definitions that we have, have here, um, also fit those cases. So I think, Clemens, you, you did a lot of, I read your, your request and I, I think um, uh, your uh, pull request or your issue, whatever it was. Uh, um, and I think, um, I think Rachel's done some work to try to tease it apart and put it in with, um, I think there was like a, a set of meetings where we talked a lot about um, prior art and there's been some work in the repo on that. Um, so I think you're right on with that and very much in the spirit of what has been discussed in this group. Um, so, so I think the question is, I just re drafted here, it would be people be comfortable with calling the middleware developer like inclusive as Clement suggests. Of, it could be an API, API gateway or a router or a software framework. It's like all the things in between publisher and consumer. Is that a, is it reasonable way yeah, to describe it? messaging system is quite common. It would be a, Yaron, that, Yaron, could you say that one more time? It was hard for me to understand. Uh, I'm saying or a messaging system would be quite common. So a question, does the middleware understand and be able to interpret the events? I, I, I think I would say yes, in the, in, the, in the sense that you may need to transform, translate, or do other operations on the events going through there as a possibility, not, not as a rule. Uh, I, I, the, the middle yeah. will receive an event, maybe translate it, process it, and, and emit another event? Well, the idea is that it, would, it, would, it may adjust the format, but it would be the same event, right? So it might say, we might go from HTTP to some internal protocol that is more optimized for that system, like some binary protocol, right? Rather than a text protocol, but it would be the same event. So the identifier would be the same, the source would be as the same, is that right? Yeah, so, so these, these common attributes that we're describing would all be the same, but they might be encoded differently because okay. that transport requires a different encoding for some reason. 
Can yeah, you add I think that? the preference is that it won't dive into the data uh, body, you know, the body of the message, unless it really needs, because it may also be encrypted in some point. We have a we have a principle here um, on on when it is a consumer and when it's not, and that is if so. So as soon as you touch the body of the message, you're a consumer, and then. And then you do you may do a transform, but then you're producing uh, a new message, which means now you're a consumer on one end and you're a producer on the other end. If you're simply doing a transcoding, which means you're leaving the body of the message alone, but you're basically just moving it from one transport mapping to the next, then you're still in the middleware. Um, well, I, th I think we need to leave this a little bit open because there's this whole question of like, what is the body of that message? So I think the key thing that I would like to capture is you're not changing the meaning of it, right? That's a and, good approximation. Right. There's also a third condition. Uh, you mentioned uh, changing the body or only doing a transform and not changing anything. Uh, what about when you are allowed to change the context and not the body? And by body, I mean specifically the field that we have in the spec called body or called data yeah i think of that as the as the body that you can't get you can't change um we, we have a in, in in if i may cite prior art again um in nqp we have a specific protection for some core properties that belong to the message where the protocol states that, you, that middleware can't touch them like they can't the middleware can't modify them at all um, and they have to do with, um, you know, with whatever the, the descriptive information for the message body, the system put in there. Um, like, for instance, the subject is unchangeable, the, the, the logical destination is unchangeable, which we don't have here, um, but the logical source information is unchangeable, all those things are unchangeable, um, so that um, the middleware has very clear rules. And then the middleware has annotation fields that it can go and add and remove and, and do things with. Um, as it as it hands the, the message for processing um, to different places. So, um, so I'd love to. So I think that that's a good example, and what exactly why I want to keep this like really high level about our intent. Like, what what are the goals for each of these personas? And then, um, and so uh, what I'd like is like to invite folks who haven't spoken yet to comment on the personas, particularly if it you represent one of those personas. So I have a question here. So here, um, so that we have an event publisher. What is the difference between this and the event source? So that's a great question. Um, what, at one, in one of the conversations we talked about that you might have, um, like if, you, if, if there was some open source FTP server that had events about when things are uploaded and, and so forth, um, you, that might actually be um, hosted by multiple companies. So the publisher is the operator and the developer is like, I am creating some software that emits events that might be hosted. Like, you know, there, there, there will have to be a way to say, oh, I'm using this FTP server that is hosted at Google and a different one that is hosted at Acme and a different one that is hosted at, you know, another company. It's the same software, but the source is different. So you are saying the source is- The so source developer is the person who creates the software that actually, you know, pre like constructs the event, right? So you're but saying the, there is sort of a I, class of the event which is this FTP thing, and there is where it, does it origin from, which is the source. So, so have we decided, no, okay, so here, I think we're more from developer point of view, but I think, you know, from a software platform point of view, right, um, how, like, you know, what is the source, what is the publisher, what is the action develop action? Um, so just, you know, I, I use the example I gave that use case, um, the sensor to detect the uh, um, motion, and then there will be uh, that picture was stored in the storage. So, what is the event source in that case? What is the event publisher? So, I, I think at this po point, what I'd like to do is identify the actors, right? So, the idea is the 
the source developer is the thing emitting the event, the thing that is, and it, it, it's up to the developer to say, am I, so you could have these, these three developers, right? So I'm gonna move the, the publisher out of the way a little bit. The operators, I think, are important actors as well. But, but if you just think of the three developers, right? In terms of source, whether you are the source or you're the middleware, totally depends on the code you write, right? Like if uh, the piece of software I write leaves the meaning intact, then I'm middleware. If the piece of software I write takes in information and then changes the event type, then I'm a source. Right? It, it all depends on whether you're emitting your own events. But Sarah, th does it really matter? I mean, whether you have a piece of middleware that does nothing but sort of adds extra data to it, in the end, it, whether it's modifying the, the event or not, it still becomes a source as the minute it transmits that to somebody else, doesn't it? Well, um, and like if you think about like, um, like in, in normal message, like, actually I think it, it is completely different, right? So. It's, it's, I think that we need language to discuss the parts of the system that are just doing transport where they're, um, they're getting something from source to destination versus the things that are like, I am emitting events. And then they may be one in a pipeline, but they really have the same concern as the original source of the event. Because to, to they are, Okay, I, thought so, I think that I think the problem is, is middleware is an unrelated term. I think that if you rely upon um, his, historical um, models, you would use terms that are more ambiguous, like modifier, observer, and producer. More generic. I, I think those terms would, would resonate more with me anyway. Modifier, observer, and producer. Observer doesn't change. It's quite clear from the name what it means. It's not overloaded like middleware. Um, so, but what would you call the transport? Observer, if, if you don't touch it, you observe it and pass it along. If you're a producer, you obviously create it. If you're a modifier, you've augmented it in some way. Um, it's, it's actually, a, it's a model that goes back to the 70s that's been used yeah. for transformation. Okay, so I just have not heard observer to include like a messaging system. Yeah, uh, you, maybe it's, it's, part, it's part of a, any type of transcoding message pipeline. These are the terms that are typically used in, in, in industry. So you would say absent no. event observer developer seems like that is your. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, I mean, I just use middleware because somebody else threw it out. So um, I, I'm fine with observer. If other and do we need consumer? So where's the consumer? So then there's the consumer slash accent action. We can argue the exact word, but that this is the, the code that eventually that where they, they um, are going to do something based on the event where um, their purpose is to act on it and be decoupled from the source, right? So this is where it, it's really only meaningful in terms of you want a developer who can couple the source and the consumer without modifying either one potentially. So, um, so if the if a system or uh, device that modifies the event, um, does it become the new source, the source? If it changes its meaning, yes. If it doesn't change its meaning, then it's an observer. When you say meaning, what does that, that's not very... Um... Well, I'm leaving it intentionally general because I think we have yet to discuss thoroughly the um, what does it mean to encode something and what is a concern of transport when does a format change acceptable? Is the body opaque? Like there's a bunch of open questions. And so yeah. I, I would just like to sort of bracket them in, you know, like we will still discuss what it means to change the meaning. Like, you know, like I, mean, I have an opinion that like format changes shouldn't matter because I think we'll have to go from text to binary protocols and so forth without worrying about, um, without saying like I'm a new source. Um, but um, but I, I want to try to do a, a um, I, I'm open to a different term, but I, I, I don't want to dive into the specific details of the specification. And I want to somehow explain um, what an observer is allowed to do, right? So I can, in here, 
this is a little different from the way that I've heard Observer used before, that an Observer could actually change the format and retransmit it. Um, but if people are like that term and, and have more experience with um, standard bodies in this area, I'm like, you know, I just want a word that we all agree on. So, so it looks like you think that's short. You can keep call it, I mean, if you want to call it a transporter, um, it depends on it depends on if you change the origination data or not. Or if you're just okay, going. I'll just change it to I'll just do the same thing. We'll do observer slash transport, and we can separate them later. Or I think it's more. So, sir, it looks like you know we still leave the definition of the source open, right? Um, is that right? What you, is that what you mean? So, um, like the precise definition of the source in terms of its attributes, but I think generally here what we're saying is that the, um, I think that we were missing as a event source developer. Um, I think that this is. Yeah, so, so the reason, I mean, the reason I didn't use transporter is transporter implies that you're a pipe and you don't do anything with the message. So you would never even include it in your model. So observer implies you, you're including it in your model because it's doing something. So how about the producer? Do it mean the producer is uh, originating the, uh, the originating um, the event originator, the original Which, event um, place? Do you mean that? No, I, I would I would separate originator from creator. Creator would be the creator of the event in the format we're trying to define. Um, so here, so I'm adding as an event source developer, I can define new event types or use existing event types that are meaningful representations of my system, state, state changes or something like that. So, I mean, the legacy term for all eventing is the origination event is basically the actual event, the physical message being created at the actual source. That's what we always call the origination event. Right, and I think that we're trying to model systems where we can allow a software service that does a database mutation based on right. an IoT device yep. signal. Agreed. Where it decides it's a source. Yep. Even though the it actually the the data originated elsewhere, right? Yeah, you need to enable oh. those use cases. And I was just clarifying for Kathy in my mind okay. what I was saying. <laughs> So just a little time check here because we have less than nine minutes left and I know we're making lots of good progress here, but what I'd like to do is to suggest that we have a follow on meeting, not next Thursday, um, but before then. And, and uh, Sarah, I was wondering if you would take the action item to, to try to set that up because I think, I think we need some more discussions here and okay. this one hour a week isn't sufficient for that. So yeah, I think that this was a good start and um, I will maybe would people like, would it be helpful to move this into a Google Doc so that people can like sort of, it's, it's maybe a little more malleable than a pull request or I can put this back in the pull request. I think in Google Doc is good, you know, so we can, you know, give comments easily. Yeah, since it's so fluid right now, maybe Google Doc would be best, but I think we also need another, an additional phone call during the week. So yeah, I'll propose yes. a, a time for the phone call, but also make sure that there's an opportunity for async feedback. Okay, now without getting into, without, continue the discussion of the design itself or the wording here. Are there any high level things people want to bring up relative to the process we're going to follow to try to resolve this? Meaning uh, Sarah's going to set up the Google Doc, Sarah's going to set up another time for us to talk during the week. Is there anything else people wanted to bring up from a process perspective? Okay, in that case, I think we have the next steps on that one. And before we run out of time, I wanted to basically have almost the exact same conversation or process question or discussion around what is the source? But I'm sorry, not what is, um, actually, so what's interesting, Sarah, is your discussion there originally started out talking about what is our design goals, but it seems like you're now getting into discussing what is the source. Am I interpreting that correctly? So we could probably merge those two discussions? Well, I actually think that they need, I, I'd like to sequence them because I think there's the sort of like, at a high level, what, what need are we, what problem are we trying to solve with defining the source, right? And then there's like, okay, let's, let's get into it with the attributes and exactly what do we mean? And so I'm trying to like the, I'm trying to use this like user story language to get like really high level. Okay. And then that should help that source discussion. 
Okay, because then I... we can have words to describe, oh, this is the transport, this is the observer, this is the whatever we decide to call it. Okay, then I think what you're probably then suggesting is we, we don't schedule a call for what is the source discussion until we, after you finish your, your AIs, correct? Yes, I would, I would like that. Okay, is there any objection then to holding off on that? I think it makes sense. Okay, anybody yeah. else? I, also, I, I saw uh, Clemson's recent uh, notion on the topic, and I don't think that what we're calling here source is what Clemson called topic. So, so the, I think uh, we'll I, I, I actually think that those that that's um, merely a matter of how you look at that construct, and it's actually the same thing. Um, and it has to do with with um, it, it really is a matter of perspective and. And that's also why what we're doing here is useful because we're now putting different perspectives on, on things. If you're someone who sends a message, you have a perspective towards the middleware. And if you're someone who cons consumes the message, you have a perspective towards the middleware. And if you're writing the middleware, you also have a perspective. And all of those come together in a reasonable term. Um, and there's prior art for that, that pe people have been coming to that point, but we should go and arrive at a, at a conclusion from us doing a joint analysis, and I think this is a good good place to do this. So I think from from my perspective, the, the what we have no notion as source really doesn't differ from where the rest of the, the middleware community landed. Okay, so not I don't think we have time to continue the design discussion here, but since we're holding off on the what is the source discussion, uh, I think it was through the mailing list. I suggested that we have a topic or a discussion. Well, my screen just went all funky on me. We have a discussion um, Monday at 9.30 Pacific time till 11. I was wondering if we could use that time for Sarah's AI to, start, to, to, to continue this discussion. I've checked my calendar. That? I have a yeah. standing meeting at 9.30. Okay, I'm never mind then. Okay, in that case, since it's still wide open, then I'll let you take the AI, Sarah, to either find a time or do a doodle poll or something to try to find that time. Okay, super. So, okay. so Sarah, uh, are you going to send email to let us know the time or how are you going to do I'll it? I'll send it to the serverless working group. Okay. And I've already made the Google Docs so you can chime in. It should be open for comment now. And then I, yeah. Well, uh, Sarah, if you can post the time in this meeting minutes, that would be good, you know. Okay, I'll do both. Okay, thank you, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, I don't think we have time to really jump into anything deeper. So let me just go through the, um, the list of attendees and make sure everybody is on the roll call. Um, let me just see who does it. Uh, Shrikanth, are you there? Shrikanth? What about Dan Barker? Dan? Yep, I'm here. Okay, and Fabio, I know we already got you. Um, okay, is there anybody? on the call whose name is not in the attendee list. Oh, Louie, I know you're there, I heard you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Srikanth, are you there? Okay, anybody else missing from the list? All right, in that case, Can you cool. hear me? Oh, yeah, who's this? Srikanth. Oh, hey, okay, gotcha, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I believe we're done. Thank you guys very much. I think we made some good progress today. And thank you, Sarah, for taking the AIs to take the next step on this. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank right. you for facilitating. Yep. Uh, uh, a quick question. Is yeah. David Miles really there or not? I thought, um, do we mark him as there? Well, he, he's marked as regrets, but uh, it looks like he actually typed it, so. Oh, uh, maybe he just was doing it offline. Yeah. Which means, which is nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. In that case, cool. We're done, guys. Thank you very much. Talk next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.